Hi, this is the second lecture and it's going to be on chemistry and the molecules of life. So we've got about 1.7 million species of living organisms and all of them are made of similar cells that have um, basic components that are made from the same sorts of chemicals. And all organisms share a common genetic material which is referred to as DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. So at the scale we're talking about right now, we're talking about the molecular scale. Um, so you know, within a cell that's in a squirrel, etc. So to trace life down to the chemical level, um, you've got to understand um, what's going on at a various different levels. So if you want to know what's going on with a zebra, um, you may need to understand a little bit about its organ system to know why its heart's functioning well or not well, you may need to go down to the level of tissue or cell. And uh, for many human diseases um, and health issues, people want to go down and study at the level of the molecule. So what's going on um, in your blood? So for example, one thing that you might have done is have a blood draw and your doctor will try to figure out how much um, cholesterol or how much iron is in your blood. They're actually looking for specific chemicals. So it turns out that biology actually needs a small amount of chemistry uh, in order to be able to really understand what's going on. Now I don't want you to panic because it's not a huge amount and um, I'll guide you from the very very beginning. So elements these are substances that cannot be broken down into other substances and there are 92 of these um, that are naturally occurring and they include things like carbon and the symbol for carbon is a capital letter C there's nitrogen big N oxygen some of the other um, things that you might know aluminium AL sodium NA magnesium Mg, potassium, K. Over here on this side, these are called the noble gases. We've got helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon. So, um, how do chemists organize um, the chemicals? Well, it turns out that for each element, there are um, particular components to them um, that are subcomponents that allow you to be able to classify the elements. Now let's back up for a second. Which of these are going to be the most important for you to know and understand in this class? Well, you need to understand carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. These are the real big ones um, to learn about. So when you're in your textbook, make sure you're focusing on carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Because those four elements constitute approximately 96% of your weight. Alright, so what's an atom? Each element consists of only one type of atom. An atom is the smallest unit of matter that still has the chemical properties. So if you look at an atom, it's going to have three main parts. It's going to have protons, which are positively charged components, neutrons, which are neutral, they don't have any charge, and then electrons, which are negatively charged. The mass, or the weight of your atom, comes from protons and neutrons. Electrons are so tiny that they don't have very much mass at all. The protons and neutrons reside in the nucleus, which is towards the center of your atom, and surrounding the center of the atom, you have a cloud where your electrons can be found. Now, what determines which sort of atom is which? Well, it turns out that it's actually the number of protons. So the number of protons are what determine whether or not you're looking at a carbon atom, an oxygen atom, um, or any other type. What can vary within a particular element are the number of neutrons and the number of electrons. So if you have different numbers of neutrons, what this does is it simply makes the nucleus a little bit heavier or a little bit lighter. And we refer to those different versions as different isotopes. 
So you may have heard of radioactive isotopes. A radioactive isotope is an isotope where the nucleus has lots of extra neutrons and some of them sometimes fall off. And when those neutrons fall off, they create a little packet of energy, which is radioactivity. Um, electrons can vary in their number and depending on whether or not you have the same number of electrons or protons or different numbers, your atom can sometimes be neutral. So in the picture that you're looking at here, you have two protons and two electrons. So you have a plus two charge and a plus and a minus two charge. They cancel each other out so that atom is actually neutral, it has no charge. But what if you had an extra electron? That would mean you'd have one extra minus charge and that would mean that your atom is now negatively charged. On the other hand, if you lost an electron, you only had one electron in this picture, you would have an atom that actually had a positive charge. Positive and negatively charged atoms are referred to as ions. A cation is an ion that's got one or more extra positive charges, and an anion is an atom that has more negative charge. So let's have a look at the atoms of the four elements that are most abundant in life. We've got hydrogen. Hydrogen has got one electron. Carbon actually has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So what you've noticed that's different between the hydrogen and the carbon is that the carbon arranges its electrons into shells. The innermost shell of any atom has got two electrons. The second shell can hold eight electrons. So if you only have four electrons in your um, outer shell, that means that the, um, the shell could actually have another four electrons. Have a look at nitrogen. Nitrogen could have another three electrons, and oxygen could have another two electrons. This point is very important because it's the number of blank spaces. See the white surrounded by the black? The possible electrons that could be added to the shell. That actually is one of the things that determines how these atoms bond with each other. So hydrogen you can only have a single bond with something else. Carbon can have one, two, three, four different bonds with something else. Nitrogen can form three bonds with something else, and oxygen can form two. So what you're looking at here is one of the fundamental principles that allows you to mix and match the atoms to create new molecules. And the rule behind them is that hydrogen bonds with single bond, carbon can form four single bonds, nitrogen can form three single bonds, and oxygen can form two single bonds. So elements can combine with each other to form compounds or molecules. So a compound is when you've got more than one type of um, element. Now generally your compounds and molecules have two or more elements in a fixed ratio. An example is sodium chloride, NaCl, which has a sodium atom and a chlorine atom and they're bonded together. C6H12O6, which is a type of sugar, has six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms and six oxygen atoms all bonded together. Notice the subscript refers to the fact that you've got six of the carbons. So, how do atoms bond by sharing or exchanging electrons? Well, you can think of them as magnets, but with different sorts of properties. There's actually three types of bond. The first type of bond is called an ionic bond, and this is when an electron is gained or lost, and it changes the electrical charge of the atom. So if you look at this picture here, sodium loses the electron that it's, that's in its outermost shell. And as a result, it becomes slightly more positively charged. It becomes a cation. 
The chlorine atom, on the other hand, steals or takes the electron away from the sodium and becomes slightly more negatively charged. It's an anion. Now, because they're slightly differently charged, a little bit positive and a little bit negative, there's a slight attraction between those ions, and that's what forms the bonds between them. The second type of bond is called a covalent bond. Co means to share. So what happens here are the atoms actually share the electrons in the outermost shell. The electrons move so quickly between the two atoms that each atom thinks that it possesses the electrons, and so it forms a very stable sort of bond. So hydrogen gas, which you find in the atmosphere, has a single bond, which is a pair of electrons which are shared between the two um, atoms. Oxygen gas that you breathe has a double bond. A double bond is two pairs of shared electrons, and you can see them here, one, two, three, four. Methane gas, uh, which is the simplest of the hydrocarbon um, compounds, um, is a single carbon that has four single bonds to hydrogen. Water molecules are very cute. They look a little bit like Mickey Mouse. It have a single oxygen that is bonded to two uh, hydrogens with single bonds. So each of those is a pair of shared electrons. So within your cells you have lots of chemical reactions and the cells are constantly rearranging molecules by breaking chemical bonds and forming new ones. So for example, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas can rearrange themselves, breaking the bonds and reforming new bonds. So I'm going to stop um, this section here and I will start another um, cast with um, this section on water and life because I'm going to run out of time otherwise. So let's start the new one.